welcome to another training module with Resource Compliance. My name is Nate Torres, a process safety consultant here at Resource Compliance. Our goal as a consulting firm is to provide solutions and simplify regulation. And with that in mind, these modules are intended to provide introductory level information on a variety of process safety topics. In this module, we'll be discussing an overview of ammonia safety and awareness. By way of introduction, we are going to cover the following topics. First, we're going to start with the use of ammonia. Then we'll move on to the production and manufacturing of ammonia. Then discuss the properties of ammonia, the exposure limits for ammonia, and we'll conclude with the first aid procedures for ammonia exposure. A very common use of anhydrous ammonia is as a fertilizer. Ammonia provides a rich source of nitrogen to enhance the health and growth of crops. Across the country in agricultural regions, it is common to run across ammonia nurse tanks like the ones pictured in this slide. Additionally, ammonia is used for water treatment. Ammonia has been used in municipal water treatment systems for more than 70 years to prolong the effectiveness of disinfection chlorine added to drinking water. As we all likely know, ammonia, when diluted with the water, in a light aqueous ammonia concentration is an effective household cleaner that can likely be found under most of our kitchen sinks. Probably the largest part of my audience is familiar with ammonia as a refrigerant. We cannot move on without mentioning the use of anhydrous ammonia in industrial refrigeration. Anhydrous ammonia is a very environmentally friendly and efficient refrigerant. As you see in the table on this slide, R717 is a refrigerant for ammonia. You see its refrigerating effect is significantly better. That is the BTUs per pounds, the heat transfer per pound of refrigerant is significantly higher compared to any other refrigerants listed on this slide. On to ammonia production. Ammonia was first manufactured in Germany in 1913. Fritz Haber and Karl Bosch are credited for developing the manufacturing process of anhydrous ammonia. This achievement won them Nobel Prizes in 1918 and 1931. As you can see in this slide, this process appears complicated, but in the following slide I hope to simplify it. Simply put, there are three inputs into the ammonia production process. We first have CH4, which is methane and H2O, water, N2, nitrogen, and what comes out of the process, the final output is NH3, ammonia, plus some byproducts. If you're interested in learning how ammonia reacts with other chemicals, I recommend going to Cameo Chemicals website. Not only can you learn how ammonia reacts with other chemicals, but you can find an enormous amount of information regarding the properties, hazards, exposure limits, and regulatory requirements of ammonia. Now I'd like to cover the properties of ammonia with you. An understanding of the properties of ammonia will inform how we handle and respond to the chemical. In order to better understand the properties of ammonia, the next series of slides will compare a variety of characteristics of ammonia with other chemicals such as sulfur dioxide and chlorine. First, the boiling point of ammonia is negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit. We think of boiling as hot because water boils at 212 degrees Fahrenheit, but under ambient pressure, ammonia will boil at negative 28 degrees, and being exposed to boiling ammonia will actually result in a freeze burn or frostbite. Ammonia's vapor density is 0.6. With air being a vapor density of 1, this reveals ammonia is lighter than air. Therefore, when released in ambient pressure, ammonia will rise. Ammonia has a strong affinity to water. So strong we've seen water from a diffusion tank be siphoned up through a relief vent line after ammonia was relieved through the vent line piping. See the following illustration. Here is a picture of water being siphoned back all the way from the vent line 
pipe terminated in the diffusion tank to the pressure relief valves on the compressor oil separator in a machinery room. With ammonia being so soluble with water, it makes eyewash and safety shower stations the best method of decontamination when one's body is exposed to anhydrous ammonia. Ammonia has a very low odor threshold. This is a great characteristic of ammonia. You could smell ammonia long before the smelled concentration of ammonia is harmful to your health. For example, I could smell ammonia around five parts per million, which is only one fifth of the permissible exposure limit for ammonia in California. More on exposure limits to come. Under certain circumstances, ammonia can be flammable. When there is a concentration of ammonia between 15 and 28 percent, ammonia can be flammable and ignite. Another way of saying it is ammonia is flammable when there is an ammonia concentration of 150,000 parts per million to 280,000 parts per million. This flammability range is more likely to occur in an enclosed area compared to outside. Therefore, the NFPA diamond of 330 is posted on an enclosed space containing ammonia, and the NFPA diamond of 310 is posted in an outdoor area containing ammonia. For additional details regarding the properties of ammonia, I recommend the following resources. A current version of the ERG, which is the Emergency Response Guidebook, the NIOSH Chemical Hazards Pocket Guide, an ammonia SDS or safety data sheet, and the previously mentioned Cameo Chemical website. There are two important exposure limits that I would like to highlight. The first being PEL, which is the permissible exposure limit, which is the legal limit in the United States for exposure of an employee to a chemical substance, in this case, anhydrous ammonia. The California PEL is 25 parts per million, while the federal PEL is 50 parts per million, meaning one can work in an environment of a concentration of up to 25 parts per million of ammonia, 8 hours a day, 40 hours a week. The other exposure limit is IDLH, immediately dangerous to life and health, and the definition of IDLH is that it's likely to cause death or immediate or delayed permanent adverse health effects or prevent escape from such an environment. The IDLH for anhydrous ammonia is 300 parts per million. Finally, I would like to finish this training course on the topic of first aid procedures when one is exposed to anhydrous ammonia. The most common exposures include inhalation and skin contact and or absorption. If ammonia vapor has been inhaled, it is critical to remove yourself from exposure and seek fresh air and if necessary, seek medical attention. Remember, ammonia is soluble with water. Whenever exposed to ammonia on the skin, ensure to flush the affected area under an eye wash and safety shower station for at least 15 minutes. If unavailable, find any other source of water to flush the affected area of your body. Note, do not remove clothing right away if frozen. Flush with water until the clothing is thawed then proceed to remove the clothing before proceeding for further flushing of your body. If your eyes are exposed to ammonia, flush your eyes for a minimum of 15 minutes, then seek immediate medical attention. Note, if you have an eye contact lenses on, the contact lenses should be removed before flushing to prevent ammonia being trapped between the eye and the contact lenses. If you have any questions about this training module or have ideas for other topics you'd like to see covered in future tr training modules, you can contact us at our website, resourcecompliance.com, or call our office at 559-591-8898. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next training.